Welcome, symbol lovers, to another edition of Understanding the Symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. And we're going to be taking another look at the Garden of Earthly Delights, and we're going to look specifically at Adam and Eve. And we're going to be using a new key for understanding the symbols of Hieronymus Bosch, which is look for the pairs. Symbols always come in pairs. Even when there's only one symbol, you have to think of it as a pair. A good example of this is the death head warning. When you see a skull and crossbones, and a skull and crossbones is a composite symbol, it means what? It means death. But it also is a warning. It means if you avoid this, you can keep living. So it's actually a very helpful sign, but its main message is death. But its shadow message, its paired message, is life. So in Bosch symbolism, when you can't see the second symbol, the pair, then that means it's merely abstract or implied. You have to imagine it, but it's there. With that in mind, we can look at our composite symbol here in Eden. The, the composite symbol is made up of Adam, Jesus, and Eve. They're a composite symbol because they're all attached to one another. Adam is attached to Jesus by slipping his big toe underneath Jesus' robe. Jesus is attached to Eve by putting his hand on her wrist. And so the three of them make one composite symbol, but they are surrounded by supporting symbols. At the right hand of Eve, we have her symbol, which is the family of rabbits because Eve is the one that's going to be fertile. She's the one that's going to give birth. Adam, on the other hand, his symbol is that cat carrying out the wrath. His job in this marriage arrangement is to do the dirty work. And so Eve is rabbits and he is cats. And the three of them together are in symbolized by that three-headed bird at their feet. So they are three minds, but they're all one body. And just as Adam and Eve, the two will become one flesh. So Adam, Eve, and Jesus are all going to be united as one body, but with three heads, uh, which all signifies that they have free will. They're still individuals but they are united in one purpose. That is fertility, family. Uh, remember the great um, directive for Adam and Eve was multiply and fill the earth. So Eve's ready to do her part. Adam will keep things nice and tidy and neat for her. And Jesus will guide them just as he's guiding the hand of Eve and blessing them. The three will become one and God's will will be accomplished. And we can see Jesus gets his own symbol, which is that fountain of life behind him. They're both centered, they're both long and tall, they're both tower over the other symbols. The pool and the beasties around it are a separate symbol. And this time around, we're just going to look at Adam and Eve. So we're going to look over our list of keys and see what we have. We've already read the Bible a bit as much as we need to. Uh, there is no such thing as magic, but for now we're just going to take everything at face value. Follow the money. Um, Adam and Eve have no pockets. And Jesus famously did not mix God and money. And so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, we'll just concentrate on notice the negative and look for the rules and the exception and that symbols come in pairs. So we we'll, can begin by looking at the rule and the exception. And since there's three, three of them, we can establish a rule. That is, 
humans in Eden do not wear clothing. Since Jesus is here the exception to that rule, that means he is an exception for some reason, and that, of course, is he does not actually live in Eden. He is not actually a human. He is a divine being officiating here over the uh, creation of Eve and the marriage of Adam and Eve, and he's blessing them both. So uh, the rule is people in paradise go naked. And the exception is when they come from a different time and space, like Jesus. So now we'll use it's exactly what it looks like. Well, beginning with Adam, what do we see? We see Adam is very rooted to the earth. He has one hand on the earth and his whole lower body is resting on the earth. Eve, on the other hand, she seems to be floating. She's almost between earth and heaven. She's a different creature altogether. And she's almost as if she's being held down a little by Jesus. And she's noticed her knees are bent. Her knees are bent towards Jesus as well as Adam. So she is very submissive. She is between heaven and earth, and remember, she has the power of God. She is the one that can create a human, just as God created a human. Her head is above Adam's head. It is below the head of Jesus, but she is still the superior of the two beings. She is still the more powerful. She is the last of creation. She is the pinnacle of creation. Uh, all these things point to her being the boss of the two. The woman is supposed to be in charge. And I guess we can read the Bible a little more. This would explain why the serpent spoke to Eve and tempted Eve first, not because she was the weaker of the two, but because she was the boss. As the boss goes, the rest will follow. And so, and Adam's punishment, or Eve's punishment, was for her husband to dominate her. So it only makes sense if she had been dominating her husband first, and then she received that penalty of having her losing her superior position. And so, Bosch has painted her symbolically in that superior position because they haven't sinned yet. This is the way God planned it. God wanted the woman in charge. And we look again at the body language. We see Adam is fully <laughs> engaged with Eve. And he's looking at her mind, by the way. But he is uh, in profile looking at her. She, on the other hand, is gazing downward. And remember those rabbits by her. She is contemplating her womb and the future. Adam is interested in the here and now. Uh, this is that last bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, uh, all that stuff. So Adam is completely captivated by Eve, and Eve is in the superior position. Eve is the brains of the outfit. So symbols come in pairs. Adam and Eve are a pair of symbols. They are different, and one is dominant, Eve, and Adam is the subordinate symbol. Adam and Jesus can be seen as paired symbols with Jesus being the superior one, uh, because he's standing, because his head is higher, because he's blessing, and it's more powerful to give than to receive, and uh, because he has that beard, and that's going to be important. And also, he's looking right at us. He is aware that we are here. Adam is can only see Eve 
and Eve has got other things to think about. And if we want to make a rule and, a, and an exception, we could say, young men do not have beards, older men do. But today we want to concentrate on the center panel and on a group of figures down in the foreground. What you need to know is the center panel is what the world would look like if Adam and Eve had not sinned. If they had been guided by Jesus and turned away from sin, this is what the children of Adam and Eve, this is what the world would look like, say, 2,000 years later. These are all the children of Adam and Eve returning to Eden to participate, to partake of the tree of life as is their birthright. So there's no angel keeping anyone away from it. But that also means if Adam and Eve did not sin, that Adam and Eve would not die. So guess who we find hidden among the crowd? Why, it's good old Adam and Eve, still happily alive and kicking. And what are they doing? Well, we see Eve she is enjoying the fruits of her womb. Uh, no more is she surrounded by rabbits. She's actually surrounded by her own children. And she's eating from a pomegranate, which is a large fruit full of many, many small fruits, which is also symbolic of fertility. So we see Eve enjoying the fruits of her womb and we see Adam in his usual position. He's a little older and wiser now, but he's still gazing longingly, fixated on Eve. And Eve is again looking at, in this case, fruit, but really her children, the future. And she's enjoying what she has accomplished. And again, she is in the superior position. We see most of her body and she overlaps Adam but Adam's body is basically hidden. He's just kind of a cipher there. He is sub subordinate to her superior symbol. So again, we have these symbols linked with each other, but also linked with that original portrait of Adam and Eve, where Adam was staring longingly and fixatedly on Eve. And notice the rule and the exception the rule seems to be the men in paradise do not have beards. The exception is Adam. Adam seems to be growing a little beard because he's a lot older than everyone else. He's growing a beard like Jesus. So I don't want to end this without tying a few things together, mainly the left panel and the central panel. And that is we have Adam and Eve in the left panel in Eden, but we also see them again in paradise. But we also see Jesus in paradise, but we don't see him literally. We see him in the abstract. We see it in the way people are behaving. The, the center panel runs on the philosophy of do unto others as you would have done to you. That is, Jesus is there in spirit. He is implied. He's just like the sunshine. He is the light of this world. So now, just for fun, let's see if we can find Jesus, Adam, and Eve in the hellscape, the panel on the right. And looky, looky, <laughs> there they are. Eve is again paired with a rabbit, just as she was in Eden. Only now it's a giant rabbit wearing a robe and blowing a Jewish shofar ram's horn. That is, he's a giant rabbit rabbi. He's a rabbi, just like Jesus. We see Adam in his usual supportive role, and he again cannot keep his eyes off Eve. Eve has entered this dark and dangerous world, taking a big risk in order to retrieve the blessings of Jesus. There's more to say, but we're out of time. Thanks for watching Understanding the Symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. And to all those who stuck around to the end, you deserve a big hand. Thank you.